Good morning and welcome to the uh, Oak Island Planning Board. If you would, let's stand and pledge allegiance to the flag. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we have our minutes. Gene, do you? No. Oh, agenda. Let's do that. Do we have a? Yeah. Chairman Bradley, I'd like to make a recommendation that we move item two, new business review of the major subdivision preliminary plat to the first item on the agenda. I have a I'll second. Second that. All in favor? Approved. Okay, minutes. Jean, do you have any uh, changes or? Do no, sir. I do not. Harry? None for me. No. Mark? Do I have a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. All Second. in favor? Approved. Was that for the July 18th, or was that for both July 18th and September 19th? Okay, got it. That was my motion, so I wanted to make sure that was your understanding. <laughs> you motion correctly. In my second, yeah. Okay. The, um, Platt. Matt. We have some guests. Oh, uh, if there's any public comment. Do we have any public comment this morning? And I see none. I'll vote motion to close public comment. You don't need a motion. Don't need. Okay. I love you, Lisa. Now we are to <laughs> plenty of room. Good morning, Planning Board. Uh, members of the public who are here and watching at home. Um, your one item of new business for this month uh, is a review of a major subdivision plat for a water side at Oak Island. Uh, the applicant is CLD Engineering. We have uh, some representatives uh, here as well for that project. Um, staff's just going to give a brief introduction uh, and then hand it over to them for their presentation to the planning board. Uh, the project is located on North Carolina 211, uh, Brunswick County Tax ID 2030030. Uh, the project has been circulated for regulatory comment. Um, all relevant regulatory comments have been addressed, and the proposed site plan does meet the requirements of the ordinance. Uh, Section 5.4 of the UDO uh, dictates how the town should review major subdivision plats. Um, the planning board reviews for uh, recommendation. Uh, council has the final approval on this. Uh, <clears throat> I'll note that the planning board uh, is authorized to take up to 45 days for their first, from their first consideration of the item to review the application prior to making a recommendation to town council. Uh, after that 45 days, should the planning board not make a recommendation, then the applicant can choose to uh, go directly to town council without a recommendation. Uh, preliminary plats are administrative approvals uh, that do not include discretionary standards for the planning board to review. Um, they're not a zoning map amendment. They're not a special use permit. Uh, they either meet the technical uh, ordinance criteria or they do not. Um, so the project's currently zoned CLD and regulated by a special use permit um, and an associated master plan. Uh, the Parcel uh, for the portion of the parcel for development is in areas D, E, and F of the plan unit development. Uh, D and E permit uh, attached or detached single family residential, and F permits detached single family residential only. Uh, the proposed project contains uh, single family residential only. Uh, it would create 282 single family residences for a gross density of 1.73 dwelling units per acre. Uh, the total project density for this master plan is permitted up to 5.8 units per acre with a maximum threshold of 719 units. <laughs> the applicant's proposed building height, uh, while not necessarily a regulation of the subdivision ordinance, um, is 35 feet. Uh, it's not within a special flood hazard area. 
the proposal includes approximately 56.93 acres of open space, which is about 35% of the site, uh, including uh, preserving 39.75 acres of wetlands, as well as 17.18 acres of general open space, including an amenity area uh, near an existing stormwater pond on the site. <coughs> Proposed project includes public streets. Uh, the town's public works and fire department have reviewed the, those streets for compliance with the town street standards and fire code requirements. Uh, it also includes stub outs to the east and the south. Uh, we'll take a look at uh, their proposed plan on the slide coming up. We can point those out for you. Uh, the site's development data indicates the connectivity ratio within the development of 1.47. Uh, the town standard is 1.45. Uh, and public utilities in this area are provided by Brunswick County. Uh, since it does access, access off of 211, uh, there will be a requirement for a driveway permit from NCDOT for that access. Uh, improvements on 211 uh, will be determined by DOT during the permitting process, whether that includes things like a traffic impact study or a turn lane or deceleration lane, that'll all be up to the DOT when they review the driveway uh, permit application for access to the site. Um, <clears throat> on your screen now is the uh, master plan that was approved with the existing special use permit. As I mentioned, um, I realize you can't see my pointer unless you turn around, but uh, it's sections D, E, and F of this plan unit development here, uh, which is slated basically for uh, residential development, uh, approved for detached or attached. Uh, for those that don't know, attached single family is basically townhomes. Um, but the applicant's uh, request would be for single family uh, lots. Uh, and here we have the overall site plan for the project. Um, as you can see, the other sections of the master plan are marked as future development. Um, and these are the portions that would be slated for development. Uh, stub out here to the east and down here to the south would be need to be constructed. Uh, those could be connected to uh, with future development on these vacant parcels to the south and to the east as well. Um, that's reflective of their master plan, which shows potential future connections to the south and to the east as well. Uh, let's see. As you can see, all single family lots through here is the recommendation. Uh, back up a little bit. Uh, the hashed in area is wetlands. Um, the greened in areas are open space uh, amenity site here, uh, kind of central in the development. Um, so uh, the recommendation from staff, since it meets all the technical criteria of the ordinance, is for uh, the planning board to recommend town council approve the proposed major site plan. Um, that being said, uh, like I mentioned earlier, uh, some representatives from CLD Engineering are here. Uh, and they'd like to walk through the project with you as well. And then we can field questions after that if that's okay. All right. Ready to go. Uh, he'll switch it over to the screen. Oh, okay. Shows. And it shows up on their mm -hmm. screens as yes. well, or do they have to? Yeah, it should show up on all the monitors. Okay. Hmm. <coughs> okay. Um, good morning. Thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the board. Appreciate your time this morning and your time reviewing these plans in front of you today. Uh, my name is Nate Allen. I'm with CLD Engineering in Wilmington. Um, also with me today is Jeff Petroff. Uh, he's one of the engineers at our firm, um, so if there's any questions I can't answer, hopefully he can handle some more of the technical things. And we also have a representative from, from our client, Draypec Partners, here today as well. So anything I can't cover, hopefully we'll be able to answer for you. Um, we're here representing Draypec Partners for the proposed preliminary plat of Waterside at Oak Island. Uh, the project, as you can see on the map that I have here, is located just north of Oak Island uh, off 211. You can see it here with its proximity to St. James, Oak Island, Boiling Springs Lake, and the project site sits right there. Um, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit to the property as it stands today on Google Earth and get a view, it, view of it. Um, 
Right now, as it sits, there's a, a gravel access drive that leads down to um, an existing, I believe it was a sand borrow pit from mining industry back in the day. And um, that's currently what the site looks like. Um, as recent as 2012, the site, aside from the wetland areas that um, Matthew pointed out to you in the earlier slides, aside from those areas, the site was pretty much cleared and um, we had provided some Im images to the planning staff regarding that. Um, the proposed site, as you see here, fronts Highway 211, approximately um, three quarters of a mile west of the predominant 211 Midway Road intersection and it serves as a directly accessible route to both seven, route to 17 and Oak Island. Uh, the property is currently zoned CLD has been previously approved as a planned unit development, which does allow um, single family, multifamily, and mixed use development on this parcel. Uh, we believe that this type of dev development is in line with the nature of the area's current zoning and serves as a good transition between the commercial corridor and more of the rural, rural residential uh, place types reflected in the existing zoning. Uh, the parcel's existing neighbors, the adjacent neighbors are predominantly residential um, County R7500, Oak Island R7, around the edges. There's some small businesses up along 211 frontage um, that are CLD. And the large uh, undeveloped properties that abut the back of this project are zoned R7 and R20. Um, here again is the map of that approved um, plan unit development. Uh, the proposed site is made up of a single 162-acre parcel that was originally approved as a planned unit development back in September of 2015. Uh, the vested rights for the project were confirmed again uh, as recently as June 2024. Under, this, under the special use permit master plan that's shown here, uh, the master plan specified the types of uses and the densities that would be allowed per area. Um, so if you see up there the A, B, and C, which are not part of what we're showing you today, that's gonna be future development. Um, those had some of the higher densities, mixed use areas. We have neighborhood retail, office, residential in, in area A. B and C were single family attached, detached, and multifamily residential permitted and with densities around 16 units per acre. Um, the project being proposed to you today, phase one of um, the master plan includes only sections D, E, and F. Um, and as you can see there, uh, the average density is eight units per acre in area D, six units per acre in area E, and four in area F. And uh, again, those areas all permitted for single family attached, detached, but we are only proposing, as Matthew pointed out, um, single family detached. Uh, the total project density from this master plan site allowed up to 5.8 units per acre. Uh, moving on to the current site plan, uh, Waterside Oak Island, Oak Island proposes a total of 282 single family detached units um, for a total density of 1.73 units per acre. Uh, typically the lots here are gonna be 60 by 120 feet, 7,200 square foot lots. And um, on average across this plan here, the lots were about 8,350 square feet. Um, this project was required to have 24.31 acres of open space. Uh, Waterside at Oak Island will boast up to 70 acres of overall open space and that includes some of the ponds. Um, nearly 40 acres of this is wetlands and that kind of shows up in the darker green areas. Um, and throughout the development of this phase, um, impacts of the wet, wetlands have been kept minimal as possible. It's going to be under half of an acre, and the only reason that's happening is the main access road that splits the property through the future phases um, in order to provide an improved 60-foot 60, 60 right-of-way road through there. Um, just had to be some slight impacts, so as minimal as possible. Do you mind if I ask you a question on the open space? I don't mean to interrupt. And if you Absolutely. want us to hold questions, I find it easier to ask them as he's on the topic. But on your open space, the provided, are you using in your provided um, calculation just D, E, and F? 
um, or are you using the open space that's included in a in the sections above that you're not coming today to actually move forward on yet? It does include the whole thing. It does include the yes. whole thing. Yes. Okay. So, but you're only seeking approval on D, E, and F, even though part of the requirements that you're addressing include the A, B, and C, if that's all of those. Yes, but overall, as an approved PUD, we're we're going quite beyond the required open okay. space requirements. Yeah, I, I'm with just you there. To, I just wanted to make sure I understood how you were calculating your provided. Yeah. Okay. And the overall provided we show as 70. I believe Matt's slide showed it as 56. Um, we've included um, the ponds in the open space calculation on this slide just because you will see in, as he pointed out, the amenity area and the pond, the existing lake is right here. The amenity area is planned kind of centrally right there. And um, it's gonna be a really nice feature of the neighborhood, we hope. Um, you know, there could be possible future development around the lake of some open space amenities beyond just the main amenity center there. So it's a real unique um, asset they have for the property and the development moving forward here. Um, uh, as a PUD, um, we were required a vegetated buffer. Um, the entire property site has a 25-foot vegetated buffer. Um, this is required adjacent to mixed-use areas um, and voluntary along single-family, where it abuts single-family, but um, we've just shown it as a continuous 25-foot vegetated buffer around the entire property. Um, the house and building setbacks for the project, uh, 15 foot front setback, 12 and a half foot rear setbacks, five foot side setbacks, and 7.5 foot corner setbacks. Um, this image here depicts uh, some of the stormwater infrastructure that showed in the preliminary plat sheets that were submitted. Um, stormwater would be collected in a drain system with typical curb and gutter system throughout the neighborhood. Um, and it will route stormwater events to the wet detention basins. Um, you can see we've added one, two, three, four additional areas for stormwater ponds, and um, also including using the existing lake right there as part of the system. Um, the basins are designed to capture and treat a minimum of the first 1.5 inches of rainfall in compliance with NCDEQ stormwater requirements and designed to attenuate the post-development discharge below pre-development um, discharges and conditions of the site for a minimum of the 25-year storm event. Um, Sir, in light of current recent current weather events, do you feel that's sufficient in terms of yeah, stormwater runoff? There's a little more here onto that, and I'll, I'll, I'll get okay. to that as well. Thank you. But um, um, for the, it goes for the minimum 25 storm event as required, but the system itself um, is designed to carry the 25 year storm event and it is evaluated for the 100 year storm events to ensure that no adjacent structures or lots would be impacted during such events. Uh, the ponds are designed in such a way that they can safely route that 100 year storm event without adversely affecting the subdivision or joining properties around here. The existing offsite drainage patterns will also be maintained through the site to provide hydraulic outlets as necessary for the surrounding properties. Um, and to further expand upon that, uh, when I'm done with this presentation, Jeff would be able to answer more accurately some of the questions regarding stormwater that you might have. Um, utilities for the project are being provided by Brunswick Water and Sewer. Uh, this picture here is showing water lines throughout the property. The larger blue dots indicate fire hydrants and they've been spaced 500 feet um, according to the um, fire marshal. And I believe he has reviewed and okayed this already. Um, Sanitary sewer on the site, predominantly gravity sewer for the whole development. Um, a proposed Sewer pump station will be located right up here. So all the gravity sewer will eventually enter a force main and come back out the property up to 211 and connect with existing utilities. Um, those plans are currently finished in our office and they're um, gonna be heading out to review here in the next week or so for utility review. Um, some of the connectivity here with the site. Uh, a single access point is proposed for the site up here along 211. 
and two future connections, as Matthew showed in his slide earlier, are proposed right here and there. I got stub outs in a cul-de-sac that right on that end. <clears throat> um, TIA for the site was approved January 4th of 2022. Uh, and it, the TIA included a potential full build out of 719 units. So any improvements that were um, suggested uh, as part of that plan um, will accommodate the full build out. Um, NCDOT driveway permit was issued May 30th of 2023. Um, and that driveway permit is um, going to address all the improvements that the TIA suggested up here along the roadway. Um, and that work, I believe, is currently in process. Um, also throughout the uh, neighborhood, um, aside from the, the main entry drive that comes, splits this area here, um, we have a 60-foot right-of-way through here, and the remaining public streets of the neighborhood, 50-foot um, right-of-way. It also includes five-foot concrete sidewalks on at least one side of the road, so we have good pedestrian connectivity throughout the site, and um, there will be some various areas throughout the property where they'll have opportunities to connect open space amenities throughout the neighborhood and make it a more walkable community. Um, our team has worked really hard with Brady and Matthew and the town staff to refine this preliminary plat for Waterside at Oak Island. Um, hopefully it meets the town's standards and we address any major concerns that you may have. Um, we hope that it'll meet your approval and we're happy to answer any questions that you might have. But thank you for your time. Questions, Gene? No, he pretty much answered all my questions. Um, fire, uh, police, patrol, those things, are those going to all be um, provided by Oak Island? Yes, they. Uh, the plans have already been reviewed by fire, and everything has been approved up to this point as far as I understand. Is that yes, right, Matt? we provide fire and police out here, and... Uh, they get sent these plans as part of our regulatory circulation as well, so, so they're aware of the potential development out here, yes, sir. So would that require the addition of resources there to be able to patrol? I know when Pine Forest happened, there was a lot of issue with the lack of, um, and I think now they're doing something in the way of fire potentially, on, I mean, you know, some type of a fire station there, but do you recall any, do you see any issues or I've not been made aware of any any issues with patrol of fire or police out here, no, sir. Okay, and only because I'm a little ignorant to some of this, would they, in reviewing the plans, is it their responsibility to give you an okay, meaning they don't see any issues or have any issues, and if they did, they would raise those to you and you would be bringing them to this it, body? It's, um, it's not a requirement of the subdivision regulations, which is what we're here to review today, so I'll preface all this with that. Um, but uh, any general comments that we get along the way, we do definitely forward to the applicant to make them aware of, hey, police, fire, anything that's not a regulatory requirement, we still send it to the applicant so they're aware of it. Um, <clears throat> to my knowledge, we didn't get any feedback to that to service level of service out here for police or fire uh, as a part of this review, no, sir. Okay. Um, there, uh, I'll just say as a general statement that uh, police and fire are, are very well aware of the potential for development out here. They have all of these uh, planned unit development plans. They have all these. So any future planning uh, for for needs out here is, is already in the works and already on their minds. So. so if they anticipated needing more uh, uh, police, mm -hmm. would they, do they, they wouldn't necessarily be bringing that to us. They'd be bringing that to town council and they'd yes, be requesting that of town council to and provide through, them extra. I mean, there's a tax base here, obviously, yeah. to support that. I just want to make sure I understand. Thank you very yes, much. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Good question. Here. Um, yeah, question. I thought on one of your slides you showed where the sewer pump station was. Can you point that out to me again? It is going to be so on the edge of wetlands, here. right? Is that 
Um, the engineering uh, standpoint. The, the pump station footprint's relatively 50 by 50. It's relatively small, correct? Do you want to speak about it? Perfect. That'd be great. Thank you. Thank you very much. My name is Jeff Petroff with CLD Engineering. I'm one of the engineers at, in our office. Um, yeah, that is that is seems to be the best kind of central location so that we can extend the gravity out. There is it is close to to wetlands. Um, that isn't terribly unusual in, in this area. Um, actually, anywhere in this this region, uh, especially gravity pump stations tend to be in the lower areas. We build up and, and waterproof and protect the area. Um, everything is is tested. Brunswick County has a pretty thorough um, requirement. That's probably about a one and a half million dollar pump station, just the technology that goes into there now. Um, there's, a, there's a building, it's all elevated, it's all flood protected, um, but uh, there's, there's pretty severe um, waterproof testing, um, air tightness, those kinds of things on, on the, the, the entire system, both the gravity system and the, the force main system that leaves that. So it's, it's pretty well regulated and designed. Okay. And so Brunswick County has signed off on your plan and the location of the pump station, et cetera. The, the plans is. are going, they're just, we, we've been working with Brunswick County for, for months. They gave us all the modeling information. They're familiar with the plan. They're doing their review now because they're technically the applicant that goes to the state. So they're, they're starting that review now and they will sign that once they're satisfied um, to go to the state. And in the spirit of that, are there any other things that you're still waiting on approval from from Brunswick County um, in terms of regulatory permitting or anything like that? Um, really, it's just their water and sewer review, the uh, wetland impacts, those are in review with the core, um, the driveway permit, which is typically the longest lead item. The applicant started on that very early. Um, that was all secured. Um, there are, I, I guess there are, the Brunswick County will also uh, be a signing party on the three-party utility encroachment to the DOT. While we have two different permitting processes with the DOT. One is the driveway, and the other is the utility encroachment. Um, the water and sewer mains that we're tying into are in the, the, the DOT right away, and they have to approve that connection. But those are really the only reviews um, that are still outstanding, or that are in process. And then you're engineering, right? That's yes, right. ma'am. So can you talk to the stormwater, um, the commitment to the 100-year protections that the ponds and the system can handle up to a 100-year storm? We are seeing yes, ma'am. We, like we that. evaluate that. We, we put that modeling. It's all, it's all a modeling process. So this site's a little unique. There's actually, it's, um, it's, it's quite flat in this area. And um, we have some, some, some decent topography out here. Several, I forget how much fall it's, um, it, it, yeah, 10 or 12, 15 feet. So we have some topography. So we're pulling the water. What, what we're doing is we didn't want to convert the existing lake into necessarily a stormwater pond. It has to, because stormwater pond has a lot of regulatory requirements, um, four bays, vegetated shelves, things that, that are hard to, to, to push onto an existing body of water, especially if there's some depth to it because it was a borrow pit. So what we're doing is we're using as kind of a, a hydraulic outlet for, for this area. And then the water comes from here through a temporary impact through the wetlands to the, the treatment pond in the back. So what we have is a stage system and, and it actually allows us to handle even larger storm events because we can stack that water. We have outlet structures in series going through here. Um, I, I don't, I'm not trying to get too technical, but um, <laughs> we, we have evaluated, we'll, we'll, we model this, and then we dump these different storm events, and, and it's the current NOAA storm events. These are, these are, these are extreme large storm events. Yes. Um, other municipalities don't have, have these requirements. They don't have, we don't end up as much, <laughs> as much pond as we do here, um, but, but we do, we've been working in, in this, actually in this corridor for, for 25 years, we're, we're familiar with the topography and the land. What we've also done is preserved some of the neighboring property drains, it doesn't tech, it kind of drains this way. There's some existing ditches that go around and through the wetlands. We've preserved all that. We've, we've kept 
We've even done some improvements over here so that any of that offsite water can continue its current path and cut through the wetlands. That was well, and yes, there are ditches in the wetlands. That was well before our client owned the properties. Um, but we've worked with our environmental consultant, our wetland um, scientist, to make sure we're not impeding any of those flows. We've sized um, our entry road. There's a culvert that will allow all that offsite water to pass through. We're not, right now there's like an 18 inch pipe there. It needs to be like a, I forget what it is, a, a double 36 or something just to, so we're making those up, up sizes as well. We're not pulling the offsite water into our system, but we're making sure it can get through our site um, w without any kind of impediment. So we've been cognizant of that and, and designed around all that. So, so as a community, we have a large sense of sensitivity here to street flooding and all that, right, based on what we've dealt with. So just right. want to make sure you guys feel like what you've built here does adequately protect this community from various forms of flooding streets, homes, whatever, yeah. right? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Ab yes, ma'am. Absolutely. We have, um, we, we check for gutter spread, how much, the, yes, all of that has been been well engineered. And I, we see that a lot of this on, on the older communities, the communities that are low density, that don't necessarily have the collection system, the roadside ditches. That's where a lot of that, um, those, some of those current problems we see are, are happening and we'll try to retrofit some of those. But this design is, is cognizant of all that and does meet those requirements. Thank you, thank you for that. Yes, and then um, the TIA, you said was, a, somebody said was approved in 2022? Yes, ma'am. How relevant, maybe I'll direct this question it, to Matt, how relevant is a two or three year old TIA in the current environment with our growth level? Yeah, <clears throat> um, so since we don't review TIAs here, just a little bit of information on them. Um, TIAs will, will typically look outward for development and okay. include uh, a growth rate associated with that development to include background growth. Okay. Um, so they typically look out several years and DOT will set a rate that says, okay, based on all the approvals through here, we expect X amount of growth to just happen separate from this project. Um, they also look at uh, future and existing roadway improvement projects. Um, so they take all that background data into okay. account as well as try to project out in the future because also, you know, when you think about a TIA, um, you know, even should this project be approved, it will be many, many years before full build out even happens. So you, you have to do that even if they're ready to turn dirt tomorrow. They are, you already have to look at, okay, not just what's there right now, but what's the projected growth rate okay. over a certain number of years. Okay. Yes, Thank you. Um, and then finally, I just wanted to, I looked in your notes to your preliminary site plan, and I appreciate your comments about um, respecting our vegetation ordinance. Thank you for that. With respect to uh, protection of uh, heritage trees on the property. And then I had a question on preliminary grading plan. I don't know if you showed that. Um, I, I just didn't understand. There's, of course, our, our copy is very small, so I apologize. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Almost had to have a magnifying glass to look at it, but it, there's some really dark areas, and I just wondered, does that mean, are those like berms? Is that, was that the point of that grading plan? There's some really dark areas around, looks like the ponds. So we, we've done it. Grading is a difficult thing to, to show at this scale. Right. Um, we yeah. do, I think we included our detailed uh, plan and profile sheets and our overall grading plans um, to staff just to, sh to show them. And, and y'all are gonna be reviewing the stormwater. That's a, that's a, a yes. local um, requirement that, that, that the town's engineer will review. Um, we, grading wise, I don't think there's anything crazy going on here we're, we're having we're building up I know the the, the road through the, the wetland corridor um, we're actually having to, to bulkhead one side of that it's it's just a again flood protection and it's also we're bulkheading one side to limit our our wetland disturbances um, there is an existing deep ditch and there's an existing drive through there and and if you drive through there it looks fine it's like yeah this could turn into a road not when you start putting the, the real engineering on it. It's right. coming up three feet or... This is yes. what they got in front of them. Sheet. Oh, okay. So I think a lot of the topography, the, the darker areas are really around the ponds because yes. what we've done is grayed out. Thank you very much. 
um, what we've done is grayed out what those actual contours are. Okay. It's not represented here because, I mean, we, we also have, we'll have four bays, we'll have um, emergency outlet structures. Um, there, there's a lot more going into it that at this scale is just very difficult to understand and see. Um, but that is where a lot of the grading is. We have to, we'll have to kind of berm up, I think, a couple of sides of these ponds where, where there's a lot of slope. Um, but again, that's all in the engineering documents that, okay. that your the town engineer um, or their consultant will review on the stormwater review process. Okay, and then um, light, under the lighting plan, is it planned to be dark sky lighting? Is that for the community so, lighting? Does anybody know? Um, actually, do you, do you, can you speak no, to that? I'm not we sure. We don't have that in hand yet, but that will be, uh, moving forward, there, there will be a lighting plan. Um, hasn't been discussed at this point as far as the dark sky. Uh, if that if there is anything in the ordinance currently in this area, I'd have to, you know, reach out to Matt regarding that. Yeah, so just from a technical standpoint, um, detailed construction drawings like lighting plans, et cetera, those are all reviewed by, by staff outside of what the council and, and planning board looks at for strictly the subdivision. Um, but we'll definitely be happy to re and will required by ordinance for review uh, those detailed construction drawings okay. to make sure that they meet any okay. requirements of our ordinance. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Understood. Thank you, Matt. You're welcome. And then finally, um, who's maintaining the roads in this community? The town, public streets. Yes, ma'am. That's all I had, okay. Mr. Chairman. Mark. <clears throat> My first question was about the roads that uh, Gary just asked, but um, kind of tying in with that, um, can we get a little better understanding the two areas where future connections, um, what, what's the thoughts or game plan with a future connection in those two areas? Because they would be subject to the approval of those landowners, correct? Um, so typically what happens with a stub out, um, you, you call it a stub out street where it just kind of ends in the property line. Um, one developer uh, <coughs> builds the, the stub outs first um, and then as new development comes through, um, we work with the new developer to ensure that street connection continues, um, especially on public streets like we have here. Um, we, we definitely have a lot of leverage to make sure that public street connection gets made and ends up going somewhere and doesn't just end, you know, end um, to make sure that that connectivity standards met. Also really important, um, you know, for things like fire access as well, you know, in, in an event where, yeah. One connection uh, is, you know, not accessible by fire. We want to make sure that those fire department access roads have a, a second way in and out to those. So the, the stub outs are, are really important, not just from planning standpoint, but also from a public safety. So we have a lot of incentive uh, and leverage on the, the town's end to make sure that as those adjacent properties come online for development, um, the, those connections can continue through those properties and, and benefit not just the developer and the residents, but also the, the town as well. So um, that, that's kind of a, a future thing. You know, we look at it as, okay, we the master plan had these connect, connectivity requirements as a part of that approval. We make sure that they're in place for this. And then as those uh, adjacent properties come on for development, then we work with those developers to, to keep that connection going forward to, to meet everybody's needs. Yes, sir. I hope that answered your question. It, it, it does, and it kind of ties in what concerns me. I mean, I know you're saying this has been reviewed by police and fire, et cetera, but I mean, I can see multiple scenarios on here that let's say you had a working structure fire, that everybody beyond that cannot get in, cannot get out, if they needed police, if they needed emergency, um, medical services, uh, I mean, there's no access to, and that's a lot of homes in there um, that are basically cut off to the world mm -hmm. in the event of an emergency, so. I definitely agree. Um, all, all those regulations are set by the North Carolina Fire Code for 
access requirements um, for certain size developments. So yeah, I, I totally agree with you and that's why it's important that we uh, indicate those future connections and make sure as the surrounding properties get developed, we those connections get made and, and serve a purpose beyond just that. Um, but uh, with, with, with sites like this, it, it's, it's unfortunate. Um, you know, there, there's not a way for them to build another road that would be beneficial. You know, there's only one piece that accesses to 11 right now. Um, there, there's no way uh, to require them to build a road through someone else's property. We have to wait for that property to come online for development in order for that connection to be made. But I, I totally understand your point. So, yes, so our, but our police and fire have signed off on this? That yes, they feel yes, it's in... Mm -hmm. Yep. Secure public safety based on the current layout and even fully built out with only one road in and one road out. It meets all our fire code requirements. Okay. Yes, all right. Now, with those future connections, um, if those parcels are going to be developed in the future, is it a giving that that connection will be there or could that fall through and they refuse to connect? Um, that's kind of a little bit of a legal question. <laughs> uh, depending on what type of development comes through and the, the scope of it. Um, but like I said, we with a public road, we have a lot of incentive and leverage in order to make sure that those connections end up getting made. Um, okay. Now, if somebody's, you know, if there's a big parcel to the right and they say, okay, we're going to do, you know, the part that fronts 211 first and then we're going to work on the back part, you know, that, that's when we get into a little bit of the give and take because you have to address the impacts of the development on the site that's actually being developed. You know, so we I, I don't want to sit here and say, yes, as soon as someone turns dirt on this left thing, they're going to build the street right then, right then and there. Um, but yes, we'll, we'll work hard and I think we have a lot of tools in our ordinance and at our disposal because we have, we have interconnectivity requirements for development in the town as a whole. You know, so it... It doesn't just benefit the town, it also benefits the applicant for future development on adjacent parcels to have these interconnections because they can use those to meet those those connectivity requirements. We can say, hey, you can't meet your interconnectivity requirement with the, the site that you have now, but here's a stub out that's gonna help you meet that requirement going forward should you wanna develop it. So it, it really benefits everybody in the end. Um, so I, I feel confident that as that stuff comes on, we'll be able to, to make those connections happen. Yes, sir. From the east side of this, is any does any of this abut to the Williamson track? I believe the south may. The uh, south one? Okay. Because yeah. I the owners weren't anything that I recognized for the Williamson track, but now let me double check that on GIS for you while we're okay. sitting here. Um, there's a couple of funky shaped pieces of property out here, so and you couldn't have provided a, another uh, access through that Mosquito Branch Road. <laughs> Interest, interesting road name. I'm, I'm not yeah. sure that's a, Cause that, what you would call a road. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> With the current wetlands and topography in the area, it'd be okay. pretty not feasible. Gotcha. Okay. The property to the environmental impacts would be much greater than probably the need for the, new, the additional connection. Uh, interesting. Okay. Um, the properties to the south that this abuts where the interconnections are shown are are not the, it, it's the parcel beside the Williamson track. But okay. I believe it's a Mr. Young owns that property. Thornton, uh, I think, owns the one on the right. Or, and to no, the, it's not Thornton. Um, yeah, to the east is a South Shore Real Estate yeah, that's LLC it. owns Our that. Office? Yeah, yes. um, I, I'm not aware of any plans for that property going forward at this time. But, okay. Um, And then um, my final question is, I'm just curious, um, will there be on-street parking in this? Will not be. No, no, no. It is not proposed for on-street parking. Okay. That's all I have, David. Okay. Final question. H there will be a homeowner association, correct? Yes. And uh, the town has already received the okay. covenants, I believe, yep. and reviewed them. And, and will... The, home, the homeowners automatically become HOA members when they purchase property? Yes, it will attract, be okay. part of the purchase. Any other uh, discussion? Do we have a motion? 
I make a motion we approve. Do we have any concerns, any other discussion, topics? I'll second for purposes of discussion. Was it seconded already? No. Mm -mm. Yeah. No, I made a motion to approve it. Yeah. Second. All in favor? Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much. Okay. Appreciate it. Cool business. Matt, we have some. Uh... Just to <clears throat> have a brief discussion item here. Um, as I don't have a presentation for this one, just, yeah. just talk about it. <laughs> um, the uh, as you all are well aware, uh, the the planning board recently wrapped up uh, review of the table of uses in order to modernize it. That's been uh, <clears throat> been going through review with town council in a workshop style session. Uh, the videos are online for anyone who's who's interested in that review. Um, uh, but it seemed a, a good time to uh, get some feedback from the, the board in general, um, you know, about priorities going forward. Um, for anybody who wasn't present or didn't watch the last uh, council workshop, um, there was some feedback that, that they wanted to consider priorities going forward. But certainly if the planning board members have any consensus or feedback about you know, what might be a good topic of discussion uh, and work going forward, it seemed like a good time to to kind of have that discussion. Um, I did include uh, the, <coughs> the UDO update priorities that the Council of Governments had provided as a part of that audit process. Um, that's where our last effort came from. Um, I believe it's number five on that list. Um, so just to kind of get your juices flowing and get some ideas. I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily, you know, set a topic up for immediate discussion because like I said, Council at the last workshop had some some thoughts about how they wanted to put together priorities for us going forward. But certainly if the board as a whole has, has some ideas or something that they'd like council to consider as a part of that priority and goal setting, um, now would cer certainly be a good time to, to voice that. And you know we can include that in their discussions going forward as well. Um, so that's all I have for you is just the general So discussion. to clarify, the board is, the council's going through the uh, table of uses and all the, that information now. Mm -hmm. What discussion topics are they looking for us to review or go forward with their top priority? I, I think that's what they're working on right now, okay. thinking about as they go through this process. I don't want to speak for them, but that <clears throat> through that process, we set up kind of a, a parking lot for future ideas and things to work on that weren't to try one to keep the discussion focused on what the planning board had forwarded them, but also to capture, you know, you guys know just going yeah. through this that, that, you know, when you go through the table of uses and definitions and supplemental regulations, it gets a lot of ideas going in your head. So they have a lot of those as well. And I thought it would be good if the planning board wants to, to provide your feedback about, Hey, you know, we know you're thinking about a lot of different initiatives going forward or priorities that you might want to revise the ordinance for. Here's what, we as a planning board would recommend you work on going forward. Like I said, I think it might be a little bit premature to actually set and say, hey, Matt, next month bring us back <laughs> this. Um, but certainly an opportunity for, for feedback to council as they consider what they want you guys to work on going forward. So let me make sure, I just for clarity, Matt, I think you'll bear with me. Yeah. So you're saying that as council goes through our table of uses, the what we've submitted from the table of uses update and review, some suggestions are going to come back from that in addition to these here? Is that what you're saying? I, I, yes, ma'am. It okay. seems like that okay. scope has gone beyond the 10, but I wanted to give you the right. 10 to kind of, gotcha. you know, some okay. things that I have already been clear. out there floating around. Okay. So, and you may have said this, I apologize. So I know I, I watched the um, the meeting online. It was hard to follow all of it. Yeah. But she, um, I think Catherine was taking notes. She was whiteboarding some things um, that were maybe those parking lot topics. Yes, yes right. that's right. I couldn't see or, or write those down like I could if I was Mr. here Bradley. for that workshop. Yes, sir. Oh, okay. So I'm sorry. Oh, uh, yes, David. 
Oh. <laughs> yes, I, I was just on the phone with Mike. I actually oh. had a lot of questions about the subdivision plat. I'm sorry I'm interrupting. Um, I don't know what to say. <laughs> did you just join? Did you? Did, Did you just, just join? Because we approved that one. Yeah. Yeah. No, I've I've been on the whole time. Oh, so oh no, we didn't know that. And anybody. I was speaking, and nobody could hear me. So I finally called Mike, and and uh, he he made he fixed it on his end, I guess. I'm sorry, David. We did not even know you. Uh, we didn't know if the link had went through or not. Yeah. I. Yeah. I've been on the whole time. Are they still there? That we could possibly ask a couple questions. No, they have left. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, no, I didn't know, Matt, if there was a way that you could send those parking lot items, if yeah. you could distribute those to us. If you said that you were, I apologize. Yeah, I, I missed that part at the beginning of. No, I definitely can. You know, if you if that you way, that would focus us on some of those sure. things, and then we can start thinking a little more. Yeah, because we recorded all those, um, all the stuff that was whiteboarded, and make sure we take a snapshot of that, so we we've got a record of, okay. of all the items. Yes, sir. Okay. okay. Um, and if that's what comes out of this this brief discussion, that hey, we want to see those as well. It's perfectly all right. I can bring them back to you probably next month. You know, for y'all to consider. Especially since we've got, you know, Mr. Purser's here digitally, but we've also got an absence here. So, yep. absolutely. I mean, I'd love for one thing to be finished before we start something else. Well, yeah. yeah I, I mean, agree. <laughs> when you start reading these, a lot of this is going to affect what the town council is already looking at. Right. Oh. So, if we make changes here, then it, you're just you're playing ping pong. Yeah. I mean. And, and I agree, and that's why I didn't want this to be a hey, let's let's set an action item for next month. It was let you know, council's thinking about this. Let's also be thinking about you know what kind of feedback we can give them about what what you guys see as planning board members as as being a potential priority going forward. But you're right, we wouldn't we wouldn't begin that effort until directed by town council. And out my impression anyway is that that's probably not going to happen until we wrap up some of the outstanding items like the table of uses and supplemental regulations. So is the that. process then, I'm sorry, is the process then going to be, so we, we and I want to remind, we got a couple of town council members here, but what was submitted to the town council, if I recall, is really the feedback from three different planning boards because it changed. Terry, I think, was vice chair when they were doing some that planning board then she became chair, and I think there were some things done by that planning board, and then she rolled off, and we have new members that took on the sub. So there's no real one body that sort of looked at the entire UDO. I know that we went through as many as we could. But if there are one or two items or three, however many, that they find as the ones most pressing, it would be certainly, and we need to give further feedback to mm -hmm. those, I see that a little separately than still being able to see their parking lot items because, you know, we might storm around a couple of different mm -hmm. things, maybe not as a body, but for individually. So if, if they could give us that those high priority items and then we could really laser focus. But is the idea now. So when we submitted all that. My thought was they were going to vote on that and accept or reject the UDO. Right. Mm -hmm. So is the idea now they've gone through, they've sort of acclimated themselves to all those pages and everything, they're going to come back to us and have us take more of a laser focus on a few things, and then those will go back for an approval? Or, or are you thinking that you're going to stay the course and just approve the UDO as well, it written? Could be. It, it could take, that, that, that decision will ultimately be up to council at the at the adoption stage when they vote you know and that's at council's discretion if there's items in there that they'd like more feedback on or whether they want to adopt it as presented as the planning board recommended that's totally up to council so i can't really speak on that and also we an important point is we haven't had we've been working on this in a workshop session we haven't had right. the public hearings yet right we don't know what kind of feedback the community may have on that as well so that might change you know i don't want to speculate and say Hey, yeah, the, this thing, we're probably going to be working on this again when we don't know what the, the community okay. feedback might look like. And, and since I'm the person on the planning board that has sat through all those <laughs> That's right. That's right. right. Yeah. You might be the only one. Well, no. right? so, so I think if you look at the UDO generally, all the changes that we acknowledged and created through the school of government exercise that we did, Matt, those have already gone to council and been addressed, correct? 
Oh, the technical changes, yes, ma'am. Yes. And then yes. now so that's done. That was the cleanup. That was yeah. what I call the cleanup. Right. Yeah. So that's done. Yes. And what's pending is then the subset of the table of uses, which is within the UDO. Mm -hmm. And that is what is sitting currently with, with the town council to finalize, review, accept our suggested changes or amendments, whatever, right? Yes, ma'am. So, but what I'm hearing you say is in that review, they're coming up with a whole parking lot of additional items, right? So what I fear is a scope creep going on, right? That I would, I would like to see after all the work we've done on the table of uses that unless they want to change something we've already done, that my request to the council, and I'll address this to them directly, is to do that yeah. and then come back to us with the parking lot and let us move forward, right? Because otherwise we're going to not get anything done, and I've, I am concerned about that yeah. if, if, we're allow, if we allow that to happen. Yeah, and like I said, th this is... That was the point of my That's totally our intention is to move those things, those things forward, but the, you know, while we're doing that, obviously you, you think about other things. You think about, oh, well... You know, what about parking or what about lighting or what about signage? Understood so, and, yeah. and, and perfectly reasonable. I get it. But I think if we keep this thing in moving forward, I'd like to see yes, the, <laughs> those table of uses changes are critical to our community and the protection and for development. And that needs to be done. And don't we don't want to get hung up on an additional uh, parking lot list that we can then uh, add to this list yeah. that we already had Agreed. and then move those changes forward. That's my only commentary. Well, so, so, and my only point on the parking lot is it's hard to have five days to react when we get our packet yeah. and then we have this meeting. It's sometimes <laughs> yeah. hard uh, for some of us, who especially who are newer to this committee and have to do a little bit. So to have a little bit of a longer view on the parking lot items so that we can ruminate and get ourselves up to speed on those, it wasn't intended to create the Coke scrope creep, but I completely appreciate mm -hmm. what um, my colleague has said. Lisa. Yeah, I just wanted to add, so we do have a public hearing for December. Um, so just, it is moving forward. Okay, and that'll good. be for the um, definitions and the table uses portion. And then there'll be an additional public hearing for, separate for the supplemental regulations portion. So they, they are moving forward. Okay, good. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Just to let you know that. Thank you. And, and I would, again, to t town council members who are here, I think that will be a lot for the community to digest right. in the normal period of time that we send that out and then have your town council meeting. So maybe there's a way that that can be sent out. I mean, in fairness to yeah. citizens who may want to go through that and respond so that we can hear good comments. Yeah, it'll be the same material that's already been available in the workshops and that's our, that those are still online and still available. Yep. So, so then if we just can move the discussion forward then on these top 10, uh, I'll call them remaining UDO priorities that Wes and that we identified. So, um, Mr. Chairman, I don't know how you want to move forward. I, my suggestion would be, Matt, if 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 you if the staff could at least look at these from a from a risk standpoint or for more critical ones, we could check off quickly um, mm -hmm. and put those in some kind of order that we can then, as a board, prioritize to make our recommendations back to council. Does that make sense? Happy to do that. Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. I mean, some of them are easy. I can knock number I, four off the list right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there, there's definitely a range of pretty simple to mm -hmm. pulling teeth. So <laughs> as, get a board, them done, basically. as a board, what is going to be the top priority of uh, development issues, protection first, or the simplest to get knocked off the list first? Well, I think you if, if staff could classify them in terms of risk and complexity. Yes. Two two grades for each one, and then we move forward based on on that. Yes, ma'am. That is that okay? Thank you, Matt. Yeah. Welcome. <laughs> it's nine o'clock. Sorry for being late. After six years on the Board of Adjustments, it meets at 10 o'clock. <laughs> I had to reset my internal clock. But if, the, if, if there's consensus on the board that you're comfortable with what uh, yes. Carrie has suggested, mm -hmm. I'm happy to, to work on that for you it's guys. If everybody's okay with that, I think yeah. that would just help I us. I think right? that would be the most great. Yep. time well used if you can do that. Absolutely. Like Carrie said, complexity and protection bring those back to us and let us look at that mm -hmm. and if possible send it out as soon as you and the town get that put together mm -hmm. the sooner the better that way we can be looking at it and actually could we uh, 
how soon do you think you could get that done, Matt? Uh, <laughs> that's a great question. Um, busier than I've ever been uh, <laughs> going forward. Um, I could probably put it together for you in a week or two, really, feasibly. Okay, so, say by the 1st of December, yeah. that would give us... If you could shoot that list out to us by the 1st of December, mm -hmm. first week, yeah. that would give us two weeks to look at it, yeah. make notes. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. And then come back for a December meeting with a good plan of action. Yeah. And the, you know, as Lisa brought up, we'll have, we do have a couple of months to think about this, yeah. right? Yeah. Because the we'll have one public hearing for the table uses in December, another one in January, um, and there, you know, just because we had the public hearings doesn't mean action has to be taken mm -hmm. along with those. So that, you know, if there's additional comment or you know time to digest before adoption, one way or another, you know, we'll. Uh, so I, I don't want you to feel like you have to rush on any of this either. So. And then related to this. Um, if I may, Mr. Yes. Chairman, um, I provided to everybody, uh, Mr. Purser, I can send this to you um, online, but um, Thank you. I provided to everybody on the planning board along with Lisa and Matt um, some information on the Brunswick County Wellhead Zoning Overlay. And um, I think this was a July community meeting that the, that the county um, sponsored, and I just thought it was interesting because it said zoning, and I thought it might be something I could learn, so I went. And what jumped out to me was that the county has created this wellhead overlay protection area, right? Because we have the um, the, the wellheads right off one, you know, two eleven, which Not basically the provide the majority of our water, right? And so the idea is um, clearly um, protecting source water in terms of runoff and things like this that would somehow damage our source water that go into those wellheads, right? And so the county was talking about um, requiring, um, even with residential development in the county, um, a proposal to have um, developers and applicants certify that development is not going to impede or pollute source water coming out of any, even residential developments, which I thought was interesting, right? You understand it from a commercial and a business and a chemical perspective, but um, also they were encouraging for that reason because residential development should also be cognizant of what's you know going into the groundwater and going therefore into the wellheads um, that that the municipalities have some footprint within the wellhead protection area. And so this map that I provided to you all, and I'm sorry that we don't have it for the public, but um, Oak Island has a significant area that is important in terms of source water that feeds to those wellheads. So, so what the county um, mentioned, I won't say they suggested it or recommended it, but they said that each of the city, the municipalities with a footprint within the areas that the source water provides and feeds the wells, should also consider doing some wellhead, uh, maybe a wellhead protection overlay in those areas as well, right? And so Oak Island, um, as you can see by this map, along with Boiling Springs Lakes and St. James, um, has a significant geographical footprint within that. So I just wanted to raise the um, awareness of it with the planning board and talk to you all about whether this is something we need to think about for Oak Island. Um, Matt, I welcome any comment that you have about it, but it, it did relate to, from the county's perspective, that even with residential development, we need to start thinking about groundwater, source water that feed into the wellhead. Yeah, and I've, um, I, <clears throat> I'm glad you passed this out. I, I've done some analysis and some mapping of their projected uh, wellhead overlay areas <laughs> for the town. Um, if you want, I can definitely bring some of that research and, and data back to you guys next month for Fantastic. further consideration. Yeah. That would be about. great, Matt. And yeah. if you could, Matt, because I believe uh, a year ago, gosh, maybe May or June, uh, the planning board of uh, the, from the county took up the standards for the um, for the overlay district, and I believe they weakened those standards. We used to have pretty high standards for our water overlays. Um, I think they adopted the, the uh, standard that is being used for uh, around the Wilmington area, mm -hmm. which are less than uh, in terms of the amount of chemicals that go into the overlay and things like that into that area. So maybe if there's some of that history you could bring. I, what I didn't do was follow whether that was actually <laughs> approved by the county commissioners. Yeah. But I think that's important to at least understand what that standard is and how it's evolved because it could impact how we want to 
Yeah, I'll, I'll do some research in their uh, agenda packets and minutes and reach out Perfect. to Kirsty over the county and, and see what they've done and what's happened so far. Because I think you're right. I think it's had a few different permutations and some things yes. have been adopted and maybe some others have yeah, not yet yeah. been adopted. So. Okay. And I know they had the geo ge geological studies. When I sat at this meeting, to, to um, Mr. Gilbert's point, they had they actually had some some um, engineers come in and do some studies. And I think maybe if they if it was perceived that they weakened protections, it was because the nature of the uh, the soil and what's underneath the ground they felt was according to the geologists, was very protective, mm -hmm. right? But that nature was doing a lot of the work. Now, Interesting. Okay. We don't know, but that's that's what they said in this meeting. But they were actually contemplating a, um, a form that every residential development over a certain size would have to complete, you know, attesting to the fact that there would not be any contamination of source water through even a residential development. So, so anyway, I just wanted to share that. And Matt, if you can bring back any information you think might be yeah. helpful, I, I would appreciate I that. But aren't they yeah. digging this up right now? Digging it up. <laughs> what do you mean digging it up? Doing well, they got, yeah. Well, they're clearing. Um, some of the property owners that, that are now, because of the work that they're doing on 211, <laughs> they have the ability to have a, a roadway cleared to access their property in the back. I, I yep. don't know that it's being developed okay. yet. Well, I I think just, but I see what you see when I drive along yeah, 211. When you look at this map, you know, oh, here's our wetland protection. By the way, we're always <laughs> stripping that and we're doing... Okay. All right. It's wetland protection. It's our water source. Oh, water. That's our water, water source. Water source. Okay. Well Drinking water. Correct. Yep. So again, I just wanted to add this as a consideration as we look at other um, UDO type activities we that we might be doing. Number 11 on the uh, <laughs> yeah. 10 items. <laughs> Sounds good to me. All right. Mr. Chair, I don't, yes, sir. I don't know if it would be out of line or not, but I know on that um, subdivision approval, that vote has already taken place and that ship has sailed. But being that we unfortunately only had a one-way connection with Mr. Purser, um, I was wondering, personally, I'd like to hear what his questions or thoughts were on it, uh, even though it's water over the dam. I'd still just like to hear what he had to say on I agree. David? Can yes, sir. Can you uh, give us your thoughts on uh, what we were talking about last night? Right. Well, yeah. You know, looking at the different soil types on the site, it appears that the soil is not a very well draining soil. So that that's a big concern. And then one of you stated that, you know, only one entrance in, one entrance out. That's a that's a huge concern, especially during a rainfall event that we seem to be having more and more often. Um, so I'd like to know the elevation that they're putting that roadway at. That, you know, that that would be helpful or good knowledge to have is what elevation is this road going to be at? Because it looks like the site has roughly an average elevation of 44 feet above sea level. And that sounds absolutely great until you know you see all these wetlands. And these wetlands are there because they capture so much water, it's turned that area into wetlands. So that tells us that this area is going to easily hold a lot of water during a rainfall event that we continually continue to have. Um, I'm, I'm covering up the video of of me i don't know if it affects you or not because i'm looking at the um the plan but if you guys look at sheet sp-03 that's their preliminary grading plan uh you know it shows your, your pump station and and your lot elevations and so forth so their existing pond of the 7.73 acres they're going to dig a they're going to dig a pretty good trench and run a pipe from that pond through the wetlands all the way back to the stormwater pond 2.69 acres, which is in the northwest mm -hmm. corner of this piece of property. You know, if their lots are an average of 60 feet wide, the area of impact through that wetlands 
you know, the dotted lines on each side of that pipe running through those wetlands is probably, that's probably somewhere in the 35 foot width of impact that they're going to put a pipe, you know, they're pretty much going to drive an excavator right over the top of those wetlands, dig a ditch to the elevation of the top of pipe, and and then they'll cover it all back up and, and walk out of there. That pipe could be moved to under the roadway with the rest of the stormwater and, and force fed to the stormwater pond back on the northwest property corner that's you know, shown as 2.69 acres. That would cut that impact to wetlands out completely. Um, you know, they already have stormwater pipe under the roadway, the entire area. So, you know, we could eliminate that wetland impact completely right there with just a little bit of change of design. Um, also, when you look at the same sheet, SP-03, you know, if you notice all these stormwater ponds, the closer the lines are together on the plan, which I believe Carrie stated was just a real dark area because of the size of the plan that you guys were looking at or are looking at, um, you, know, you start to see the elevation of the site. And something I notice about every stormwater pond is, well, just take, for instance, stormwater pond that's labeled as 2.69 acres northwest section. The first pond, you know, it's a small pond first that traps all the sediment. The water goes over to Four Bay, which is a wall in between the two ponds. And then once that pond fills up, there's an overflow dam or emergency spillway on the north section of this. And I mean, it's it's 50 feet away from adjoining property owner's property. I'd like to know the elevation change there to know how much water you're going to push onto that property owner. Even though the water's been treated, you're still, water will still be flowing to that property. Um, when you look down at the west end of the project, it's a stormwater pond that's labeled 0 0.70 acres. You know, obviously this uh, overflow dam, it's pushing the water right back into the wetlands. Um, just, it seems like everything is either going back in the wetlands or it's going to go into go on to an adjoining property owner's property. And that that's a concern. Uh, the impact of the wetlands when this <clears throat> pipe could be piped under the road back to the other pond, that's a big concern. And then the height or the elevation of the roadway crossing the wetlands for the main entry, that is a tremendous concern. I mean, if we get a another unnamed storm like we had this year that roadway is completely underwater you've got 272 residents as as i believe it was mark spoke earlier that uh nobody has access to them and you know that's going to be a huge issue i i know it may meet the current conditions or or you know ordinances set forth but safety you know is still a number one issue Matt, remind us again, who is it who will look at all of that and sort of make sure that some of those, if not all of those types of things are considered in the overall plan? Yeah, so they'll have to get a stormwater permit from the town, um, that processing. So they're part of our technical review, but we don't process the stormwater plan as a part of the subdivision plat separate from that. So our, sub, our stormwater administrator will need to look at all that. That being said, um, to Mr. Purser's point, what I can do, because this, you guys just made a recommendation that goes to town council. Um, I can definitely uh, request that the applicant review the video of this and hear some of Mr. Purser's concerns and potentially be prepared to address them at the, the council presentation. Yeah. Um, so he can kind of speak to all that. Good. That'd be Very good. good. Yeah. Yeah, I think yeah, I, I think it would be I important, was, Matt. Oh, hold on just one second, Mr. Purser. I think what would be important is when we present to council our approval, I think several areas of awareness, including Mr. Purser's comments, were, I mean, I did specifically ask the applicant, you know, do you feel confident that what you have planned and managed and engineered with stormwater will prevent flooding in the community? I specifically asked that question. So, yeah. and he acknowledged right. that he did. So, we still, though, I think as a board, share that concern to Mr. Purser's point, and I'd like 
if we, when you make the presentation to council, that we highlight that point, and as well, the ingress and egress mm -hmm. is also a continuing concern of this board um, when it goes to council. That's so, fair. is that fair, Mr. Purser, that those two main areas, flooding concern right, and yeah. ingress and, and egress? And yeah, the, the wetland impact where it's truly not needed, where they could run that pipe under the street work to get to the, um, to the, to the first pond before the four bay, that that would eliminate that complete wetland impact in that area. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I'll be happy to <clears throat> make sure the applicant's prepared to address all that in front of council as well. Yes, Thank you. That's good for sure. But but and our stormwater administrator, you said, will look at their plan. Oh yes, yes, ma'am, absolutely. So it's a local stormwater uh, so Bryce permit. Bryce will go it's through all that, right, and and probably address these same concerns I wouldn't imagine yeah and it's a little bit of the disconnect between uh, the actual subdivision plat review and the construction drawings review mm -hmm. um, you know planning board and council uh, <coughs> they may include a lot of these plans but you're not approving the construction drawings as a part of your review you're approving the subdivision itself so the the lots things of that nature right. um, the construction drawings still do have to be reviewed by public works, especially for public streets, make sure that they're built the way we want them to build, make sure all the pipes are laid out appropriately, stormwater, et cetera. So just because the subdivision plat is approved doesn't mean they've got a final approval to go in and, and turn dirt. There may be other, uh, right. other regulatory permits and thresholds that they have to meet. I mean, certainly with wetland impacts, you know, there may be Army Corps permitting processes that they have to go through. And a lot of times you can't, either can't or shouldn't, start that process because it's long and expensive until you know that your your basic subdivision design meets the the local zoning criteria and the subdivision criteria um, but certainly like certainly bryce will be looking at it and i'll make sure that the applicant uh hears uh the continued concern from mr purser and, and carrie and the board as well and it's ready to go at council to to talk to speak to those absolutely thank you Good. thank you well thank you Thank you, Mr. Purser. Those were all Thank really you. good Very comments. Good Helpful. Yeah. The good news is uh, Councilman Chulo is here to hear those as well. So <laughs> Absolutely. <that's good. laughs> yeah. Got an got a informal board liaison today. Yeah, <laughs> right? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so we are on to board member reports. David, since you're on the screen, do you have any? I think I'm all good. Thank you, Gene. I'm good. Cool. Report out. Thank you, Terry. Um, um, Mr. Uh, Bradley and I serve on the uh, steering committee for the comprehensive land use plan update. So I just wanted to, as a member of that steering committee, encourage everyone in the community who has not participated in the survey regarding uh, the, the development review of our land use plan to participate. Um, you can do it online. There's all kind of different sources of where you can um, access. Matt, they can come here if they need to do it on paper, right? There are different aspects of people, so the citizens can have access to it in, in different forms and formats if you can't do it electronically, but I just would encourage everyone in the community to please have a voice in that process. Absolutely. Yes. Mark? Um, nothing other than just wish each of you and your families a nice Thanksgiving. And I want to welcome our new uh, board member, Reese. <laughs> Kind of a shaky start. <laughs> Missed the first meeting being out of the country and late for the second one, not being used to the time. Uh, last time I was on this board, uh, I was the chairman and we met in what was known as the little room at the rec group center on folding tables and metal chairs. We, we've come a long way, haven't we? <laughs> but um, glad to be back. But, um, I'll do what I can to help everybody and uh, do what I can to help the town. Been doing it for 25 years. I hope I can do some more. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome. Thanks for having me. I am good. Matt, you want to? I have a brief report. I'll give this. There you go. Um, uh, well, first I'll touch on what Carrie touched on yesterday. Community engagement surveys out there for the comprehensive land use plan. Anybody who's not participated, please do. We have printed copies. I had a printed copy turned in today. Um, so come on out and fill one out. If you can't do it online, uh, there should there's links online, there's flyers <coughs> in a lot of the businesses around town with the with the code and the website. 
Uh, we've also posted the code in several parks around town, um, you know, with a little sign with a QR code on it in the website as well. Um, I, I spoke with uh, Greg with Withers Ravenel on Monday, and we've been having a good response rate so far. So let's keep it going. we got a couple weeks left. Um, also a part of that, uh, we still have our, <clears throat> from the first open house, our community engagement map is still downstairs uh, here in town hall. Uh, feel free to come post feedback on it. There's sticky notes. There's instructions for, you know, the color coding of the sticky notes. So anybody who's interested in that, definitely uh, feel free. That's also going to stay up through the community engagement portion. So till December 7, when they when all that stuff will go back to Withers to, to start processing for the next um, steering committee meeting. Um, okay, plugs aside, uh, <laughs> um, I gave everybody uh, a copy of an email that was forwarded from the North Carolina uh, APA, which is the American uh, Planning Association, the North Carolina chapter. Um, I did want to bring this to the planning board's attention. Um, <clears throat> uh, Senate Bill 382, uh, passed House, uh, the North Carolina House on Tuesday um, and was scheduled for consideration at the Senate yesterday. Um, I checked this morning and it did pass uh, the Senate yesterday, so it'll be forwarded to Governor Cooper. Um, this is a wide ranging bill. It covers a lot of topics, including hurricane response, other regulatory changes. A lot of stuff is in there. But there is one uh, pertinent planning note um, a proposed change to the general statute 160D 601D. Um, this addresses down zoning um, in uh, local jurisdictions. Um, previous, under the current statutory construction, uh, local governments are authorized to down zone currently. We're, we're just allowed to initiate a down zoning. What, what the current ordinance does is stop a neighboring property owner from trying to down zone your property. You know, we might, because anybody can apply for a zoning map amendment. So they might say, oh, I don't want somebody to build a house there. I'm going to apply for the town to consider zoning that open space instead of R6 or whatever, to just to use some local parlance. Um, this proposed change would do two things. Uh, one, it would remove the authority for local governments to initiate down zoning. Um, so the town could no longer, you know, say we've got a property uh, that might be good as an open space. Without the property owner's permission, we cannot initiate a down zoning. The other and particularly more impactful portion of this is that this doesn't just apply to zoning map amendments. It applies to amendments to zoning regulations that have the same effect. So let's say you want to change the maximum density in the R6 or whatever zoning district from 5 to 4. That, that's now a down zoning, and the town could not initiate that without every property owner that would be affected agreeing to it. Further, it expands that definition of down zoning uh, to subsection three in that email I sent you to include, uh, under the definition of down zoning, creating any type of nonconformity on land not in a residential zoning district, including nonconforming use, lot, structure, improvement, or site elements. So this only applies to commercial property, but improvements for site elements are pretty broad. Um, so let's say, for instance, you have a developed area of town and it's a really automotive you know, style of development and you want to adopt rules that uh, try to make it more, walk more pedestrian friendly. Um, things like requiring uh, parking to be situated a certain way or in a certain location, things like the size of signage, the pedestrian improvements you have to install. If you apply that to an existing zoning that has development on it that would be non-conforming because of that, that counts as a down zoning now. Um, so it, like I said, this is passed through two chambers. It still has to go to the governor. Um, so there's other legislative steps that likely have to be taken in order for something like this to be adopted. But if this if this passes, um, not only does it affect the town in that we can't do the existing down zoning, it also makes it very difficult to through through the tool of zoning uh, reimagine commercial spaces and right. try to change how that's developed. Because once you create, you know. You create a regulation that says, hey, 
in the commercial zoning district, all the parking has to be to the side or the rear of the building. You know, it's, it's a typical construction that increases walkability because now the pedestrian just walks up to the storefront. They don't have to walk through a parking lot. If you've got parking lots in that zoning that are not to the side or the rear of that building, that's that's now non-conforming, and so that ordinance is invalidated. Um, so it's it really uh, <clears throat> kind of refocuses towns on less of the stick and more of the carrot. So you have to say, okay, we want people to develop in a certain way. How do we incentivize them to develop it instead of requiring it and then waiting for the redevelopment to occur and then they have to do the zoning so I just wanted to make you all aware of that like I said it passed the two chambers in two days so it seems like there's some momentum behind it um, but uh, just something to keep an eye on going forward and I'll definitely keep you guys appraised if it ends up being state law so that we can you know, take that into consideration whenever we think about zoning and amendments. so anything we're doing in the table of uses does anything that we're doing is it affected by this change or are we grandfathered in based on, I mean, cause we haven't, we don't have those town council approved. So that's a, a great point. Um, I wouldn't slow down because like I said, it, it, it has to go through the governor. The governor may decide to veto. And if he vetoes, then they have to do an override and that, that's and a whole other procedure. Be over, it'll it, be overridden. Potentially. <laughs> um, you know vote count was? Did it get the super majority? It was pretty high. It was 30 to 19 <laughs> in the Senate. I it was think. what? 30 to 19 in favor of passage in the Senate. It was 60% is yeah. the supermajority. Yeah. Yep. Um, so anyway. That's yeah, but didn't I read somewhere <laughs> yeah. where it How? said any regulation within 180, it goes into effect it, that it, day and anything six months prior to that? It, it does affect anything six months prior to it. It's retroactively. retroactively. Six so, months from the date of So adoption. with some of the work that's being done on, on you know, the, the business corridor, for example, let's say you had three properties that agree, okay, and one that doesn't. Can you basically still... Can you, is there this notion of grandfathering out one particular property so that the other three can go under the new because they want to, but then allow that one to still stay under the old? Or, or does it kill it for that entire four blocks potentially? If So, if, so a blanket zoning change, so for a whole district, um, the way the statute is enacted or is written is <coughs> without the written consent of all property owners whose property is the subject of the down zoning. So if you adopt a you know, a zoning regulation that would affect the enti one entire zoning district, and it falls under this category. They all have to agree. The, the option you're talking about would require the creation of a whole new zoning district for those. For the know, three. For the three. And then the yeah. one would be outside of that zone. Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, it, it's definitely an interesting constraint from a Thank you standpoint. Um, so we don't know whether our table of uses changes I'll have, to, by this. I'll have to review it. Like okay. I said, this, this okay. just came out in the last two days. I didn't even okay. know it existed prior to this email coming okay. out. Right. Um, Who brought this bill? Do you know? Uh, I haven't got that information in front of me. I'm sure it's available on the General Assembly website. Yeah. Um, a little bit. Senate Bill 382 <laughs> uh, started its life in the General Assembly in the previous session as a bill to uh, amend the regulations for the practice of dentistry. Um, and it was expanded that broadly. It, it, it like I said, it, we did, nobody in the state planning organization knew about any of this stuff until a couple of days ago. So it's, um, uh, we'll be scrambling a little bit on our end. But just want to bring it to your attention. Anything else, Matt? I think that's enough. For today. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 On that note, do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you, guys.